you know, the 50-year-old man from Cheshire who was bailed until the 12th of April. So there's 19 days until he will have to answer bail. I think there are a number of questions to the seven known people who were present. Um, two of them were women, which makes it impossible that they were involved in the murder because the man was murdered, unfortunately, by two men, they believe. There is one man who's been questioned. Um, there are two men who were present of a certain sexual disposition. There were three others who we don't know what they were, what they were, what their sexuality was. Um, and then there is the possibility of a person who was mentioned in February 2012 by the Mirror, the vanishing guest. So there could have been other people there, but the police now have 19 days to go on this. And um, it's time that they really clarified what was going on in that. Um, and the key discrepancies, um, if we go back to July 2015, Barrymore's friend, Fiona Phillips of the GMTV or whatever she was on with him, she said, my friend Michael Barrymore's only crime was coming out. I absolutely believe he has nothing to do with Stuart's death. It was in his house. There was alcohol. There were drugs. It was surprising. No one knows exactly how Stuart died. She said that. Meanwhile, in 2002, Michael Barrymore's ex-wife, Cheryl, in her book, My Life with Michael Barrymore, said, he was forcing drugs on people without them knowing. I learnt that not only um, had he been doing drugs, but he spiked all the, drink, all, the, all the food and drink. If you didn't volunteer to have fun with Michael, he'd give you the drugs somehow to make sure you did. I was starting to be scared how far he'd go. So... There is a lot of things here that the police have got 19 days to look at. We've got the vanishing suspect. We've got the, the, the seven guests. Um, and then they need to delve into the involvement of Michael Brown, who was Barrymore's agent, who the Sun this week quoted. They said they just really wanted to clarify if there was a aware of anything coming to light over the last 20 years. Of course, my honest answer was, believe me, if anything had done, you would have been made aware of it. These people know something. And one of them spoke to another one. And one of them spoke to a partner. And it's time before Terry Lubbock dies that this poor man who's got a terminal cancer gets justice for his child's death. That is a good mission, definitely. So do you think the conspiracy is expanding then in the eyes of law enforcement? Well, I don't think it's a conspiracy. I think it's it's simply um, a police force who have done very little. And last time I came on here, I was criticized for criticizing Essex police um, because I mentioned another case. Um, but Essex police did not do the job at the time. What happened to the thermometer? that was by the pool that disappeared. What happened to the door handle? That, that these things were seen there at the beginning. Why weren't they there later? Um, it is now time to get a resolution before this poor man dies. You know, his ex-wife has written to me via Twitter. Um, he is a very ill man. And one of those seven people or extras that could have been there also knows and one of them could do the right thing um i think we all know according to twitter who the person who was arrested was but he cannot have done that alone even if that was him it would have taken more than one person to do this and all that is required is justice for this poor man who was the father of two children whose father is about to die has Barrymore ever issued a statement through his lawyers? About Barrymore this? has issued repeated statements claiming various things. Um, and he was paid £60,000 to go on P1 
Piers Morgan's show and talk about this. But he would not face the father of the person who was murdered in his swimming pool. And it is not a mansion, as some of the people on your website have claimed. Um, it is a bungalow. It is, a, it is in a compact plot of land. It looks, it is an L-shaped property. The windows overlook the swimming pool. Those people knew. Michael Barrymore saw that body at 5 a.m. The police were not called until 5.46 a.m. Why was the 46 a.m., 46 minute difference there? That is a simple question for anybody, and that is a fact. Isn't there a crime of like fleeing a crime scene well, where he, a homicide he, uh, is being committed? He, he, according to other people present, and one of the women, I believe, um, was seen rummaging through drawers and, and he took things and then he went because he wanted to seek a safe space. He so, left the scene before the ambulance arrived. So that's just accepted in the eyes of the law and he could not yes. be charged with... But the, 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 many people who say that this house, which they believe the words of you know sensationalist newspapers who say this was a mansion, it is a bungalow. It is not a big house. It's it's a, an expensive house. Yes, it's a big, a relatively big house in some people's view. But it, the windows of the property, if you look at the front of it, the, the front of it was a garage. The back of it was where the windows would be, which would have looked onto this L-shaped section over the swimming pool. So of these people, more than one of them saw it. There is no way they did not see what was going on. They went there for this after party and they had their fun, which started at 2.30 a.m. And at 5 a.m., Barry Moore spotted the body. At 5.46 a.m., the first call to 999 was made. What happened between 5 a.m. and 5.46 a.m.? And another conspiracy theorist, these people would have talked to one another in that period because they would have panicked. Look, it was a party that went wrong, probably. But that poor man is dead. He has two children who have no father. His father has no son. His ex-wife, you know, she's written to me, poor woman. She said, everyone talks about Michael Barrymore. No one talks about my son. And that's the tragedy in all of this. This, this family are the victims, and Barrymore continues to, to go on Instagram making videos of his silly little games that he plays during the lockdown. I don't think many people want to see that, really. I think it's terrible. You said he got 60 grand to speak to Piers. What did he tell Piers? Oh, he said it wasn't his fault. He didn't know. Well, he didn't know. What it, nothing to do with him. It all went, it was just something that went wrong. He doesn't ever apologize. And he keeps trying to reinvent himself. But this man, Terry Lubbock, has campaigned for his entire period for justice for his son. And he deserves justice. And he will die soon. And I very much hope that this final investigation, which has been brought about because he has caused it, will actually get him what he deserves. And is there any way that the viewers can support Terry? Um, I think you can support, there is a Twitter account where you can support Justice for Stuart. I, I don't know the exact link. I, could, I can write something later and share it but that's what they should do yes so if you're watching this on youtube then we will have a link in the description box so you can support terry as well as supporting what what matthew is doing huge thank you for coming back man. Okay. well thank you very much and uh great to be with you and uh we'll watch the epstein and maxwell cases and, <laughs> and everything else with continuing interest every time i go on the road news will break it's guaranteed that something will happen next week in the epstein case so let's see let's see well indeed we've got a lot more to come yet before july definitely that. But thank you very much
Yep. So you, links will be down there for Matthew. So check out his work and you have a good night, Matthew. Thanks again. Thank Take care. Bye-bye.